good. So uh, here uh, we are talking about game tree search and pruning algorithm. We already talked about uh, min max and Nash equilibrium previous time. Then we talk about this uh, perfect information zero sum game previous time. We gave the examples like chess checkers, go, reverse, etc. And then uh, we talk about a, a brief history of the work on this topic, restatement of the min max theorem game trees, the min max algorithm. And uh, here we want to talk about more about alpha beta pruning uh, in this session. And again, the reference for this one is the uh, chapter six of this book, if you want to read more about them. So this we will uh, skip. Uh, okay, so this one I, I want to again, and uh, emphasize that each node in this tree would be a max node or the min node, and the max node try to maximize, the min node try to minimize. Uh, we had some kind of running time uh, analysis. Uh, this is the one about the backward induction that we talked uh, previous time. Uh, and so this, this is the one actually we are working on. This is the start of the thing, that, but we are adding more to that. So we said that if it is a terminal node, then we are returning the V of X. If it is a max node, then we will say that which one is the, the one that makes the max, and we will return that action and the value. And if it is a min one, then we just return the min value. So that's essentially the thing that we discussed. And then... Mm, Uh, then we talk about this uh, Shannon algorithm that uh, actually you may do this one with some depth D. You may not be able to go all the way there, but there is this, this depth D that you may go up to depth D. And uh, essentially, I mean, if the depth is greater than zero, you are doing the same thing as before. But if depth is equal to zero, then we are returning E of X. And E of X was the some kind of aesthetic evaluation function that we have it for this. And we discussed it previous time that what are the type of thing that you can do it. And if you do it better, then you can do much better, essentially. If in particular, if you know exactly e, uh, if E of X is exactly the value of the game at that node, then you can get the exact solution. Otherwise, you may get uh, some kind of approximate solutions. So these are some of the discussion that we had. And this was, I think, the last thing that we mentioned that the exact value of that. Uh, so the exact value of E of X is really, is not that important as long as we can have some kind of monotonicity. Here that you will see that, for example, if um, this node is greater than this, this is greater than this, so the E of X that we are getting also, this is the case. So as long as we have some kind of monotonicity is enough. Why? Because we are just taking max and mean. This is like more ordinal type of thing. We just see what is the order of this. And it doesn't matter essentially which one of that. Uh, good. So let's go and do a little bit about uh, pruning. Mm -hmm. Great. So, uh, so far, what is the idea? So this is a game. This is a search tree that we have. Make sure that. Uh, so we have a search tree that we have. Uh, this search tree said, okay, which is a very large. We had some ideas about what is the size of this. And then uh, we mentioned that, okay, we cannot go all the way in depth, but then maybe we can come and maybe actually can draw it here. It would be better. So uh, this is...
Yeah. So we had this kind of the essentially the search study. We said, okay, we cannot go all the way here. So we can go up mouse to depth D. But the issue is that this depth D is not something is written in a stone. We can increase D a little bit, maybe by a few more levels. And like even few more levels actually can make your program much, much strong. Because in some sense, you are anticipating a few more moves that can happen. And then you mentioned that this idea come from the human being. Just as when you try those people who are better in chess, in some sense that they can predict a few more moves and then based on that, they are taking. So this is the idea that we got it. We want to go a few more steps if we can uh, with the same resources, with the same compute resource. The issue is that then in that case, the idea is that maybe we can cut some part of this tree. Maybe we don't need to go to essentially see this part of the tree. And if we still go a little bit more in depth, essentially, go to D plus one. If we can do that, of course, for program, uh, and of course, we are we don't want to lose in terms of valuations. So still, we want to get the same value, maybe skip some parts of the trees, and like the game tree, we don't want to look at it uh, such that we get the same value and we can go one depth more, essentially, again, with the same uh, amount of resources. Uh, good. So here, that's the concept of pruning that we are talking in two player games. I mean, uh, there might be some generalization for three player game, et cetera, but I mean, here we are considering two player game, which is a common thing that we are considering in this class. <laughs> Good. So uh, both of this backward induction and min wax, uh, they may examine some nodes that they don't need to be examined. And that's exactly the part that we try to prune it. So for example, consider this case. So this is uh, this nodes, this B is three. Then when we come to A, we know that. So this guy takes the, this is the mean. So mean of this would be three. Then comes to max. This guy is taking the max. We know that this max would be at least three because there is one option of three. The issue is that if some other thing, we know that the value of the guys is at most two, then you should not essentially spend compute resources there and examine more. And we can cut that part of the tree. That's the whole idea. So if we know somehow that this next guy here that we consider the maximum, it would be at most two. So we'll see that this one say this is the, it takes minimum. So for example, here it is two, two, then it takes minimum. So we know that the mean of this would be, I mean, at most two. It means that anything here, et cetera, can be cut because at most it would be two. And I already have an option of three. Why should I spend more time essentially investigating this? And that's a part that this part of the tree, it can be pruned or can be cut. That's the idea. And you can say, this I'm talking about max min, you can do the similar thing with uh, min max. Both of them you can do it. And that's the thing that we call it alpha beta pruning. Good. So let me raise everything. So this is the example that I have uh, just described in advance. So as I mentioned, so you are seeing this F, then you will see this G digits two. This guy taking minimum, so we know that it is at most two. It means that the other excess here doesn't matter to compute the value of this, and then we can essentially cut. Uh, however, uh, so for this time, essentially, we can cut this. So we can cut this part of the tree. However, when we are seeing here for i, so we get 14. So we know that the minimum is at most 14. So at that time, we cannot cut it. We need to continue. So 
So here, I mean, you will get, you will see five still is greater than three, so still we need to investigate more. And then here we are seeing a person which is two. Then we know that it is at most two, then this X can be essentially crossed out and there is no need to do that. But this is the general uh, general idea of alpha cutoff, which is essentially a more general thing. Mm -hmm. Good. So uh, here, what do we do for uh, change the color? So what is the alpha cutoff? <clears throat> so this is the more general idea than the one that we discussed. <clears throat> so assume that uh, these are the max nodes. These squares are the max nodes. Good. P, Q, R are the max nodes. And the mean node is a circle as we discussed before. Let's take alpha be the max of A, B, C, essentially. And there is no need to be just three of them. It can be more than that. It might be another, I don't know, here is, H is another max node, et cetera. Uh, this alpha would be max of all of these max nodes that we have so far in this kind of hierarchy. So there is no need to be three. It can be any number. And here, so this is the, say alpha is this one. And D, so this is here, we have the mean node and the value of that is D. Good. And we know that D is less than or equal to alpha. Uh, of course, I mean, to reach S, you need to go through PQR. So you need to do all of this such that you will reach S. So uh, here, because this is a mean node, so we know that here, you see these are the alpha is the max of these guys. We know that if you are going here or here or here, you may get some value greater than alpha. Alpha is the current maximum that we have. It can be updated. However, what do we know? We know that if you reach node S, in this case, any place that you will go from here, the value that you will get it is at most D because if this guy is taking the mean. So the mean would be at most D. And D, as we have assumed, is less than or equal to alpha. So what's the meaning of that? It means that max can, if it goes other places, it can get actually probably better value than alpha, but it never gets a better value if it continues as this. So in that case, we can actually just cut this part of the things, and then we still we get the same value as before. Like we don't lose anything by cutting. That's the important thing. And here note that again, this is important. This alpha is the max essentially on these hierarchies. This is the max on the hierarchies and max can get updated. So for example, if you are here, this you may go to another max node, I don't know, R prime here. In this case, the alpha might have been updated essentially. It's a larger thing. With the current alpha, we have some estimate that, okay, this should be the value of this guy would be at most 
alpha. So if you uh, in if this value we know that the mean is at is d and d is less than or equal to alpha, you should not continue. That's essentially meaning of alpha proving or alpha cutoff. Good. So here we have also beta cutoff, which is exactly the somehow uh, dual of the previous one, or like completely symmetric to that. Here we consider that these are the PQR would be the mean node, and they are represented by circles. Uh, D is greater than or equal to beta, and S here is the max node. Again, to reach S, the game should go through PQR. We know that if you move somewhere else, you may get uh, some value V. If you go here, for example, to R prime, you may get some value which is uh, less than or equal to beta. But here, this is the max node. We know that the value of this guy would be greater. This is D. So the value would be greater than or equal to D, and D is greater than or equal to beta. So here, you can essentially cut off this one for the max. And again, this mean things, again, some value that we will compute it when we are doing this kind of uh, traversing these search terms. And this is called the beta cutoff or beta pruning. So alpha is for max in some sense, and beta is for mean. Now, uh, so this is the main idea of this, which is very natural ideas. Uh, but let's see the code for that. <laughs> Good. So this is this uh, alpha beta pruning. Let's see what is the code. So in the alpha beta pruning, we have, uh, as I mentioned, we need to bring this alpha beta essentially also as a parameter to our procedure, to our recursive procedure. And this is something that will be updated. As I mentioned, if you go here, you may find some alpha. Later, your alpha might be updated, essentially, and becomes greater, such that you can cut more, essentially. So here, we have this alpha beta function. It says that if x is a terminal, then return the u max of x. Or, uh, uh, of course, in that time, if you reach a terminal, then you are in a good shape. You will find the exact value. But of, uh, this may may or may not happen. Say, for example, if you are playing chess, maybe, I mean, like you go five levels down and five levels down is the part that you know actually at that time who wins the game. Uh, but sometimes, I mean, you may not reach that. If your budget in terms of depth is essentially is gone. So you don't have any further budget. You should, essentially, you should decide here. Of course, then we talk about, uh, we talk about, uh, this kind of evaluation function, and we are returning the office. And that should be as precise as possible. Otherwise, we need to do this thing that is mentioned here, and then we are returning the value V. And again, when we return the value V, always you can return in addition, like in Python, you can return a, essentially a tuple. You will say, what is the value and what is the action corresponding to that? So when you come up, you know that which action you should take the one that's the best, and that's the action that you should take. Good. So now this is the essentially alpha beta proof. So that if i is a max node at x, then uh, v is equal to minus infinity. Why? Because this is some uh, essentially default value. You all, When you try to find the max, always the default value should be very mean, such that anything you will find. Larger than that, it essentially sets as the new max. So you should not put V infinity, because if you put V infinity, then in this case, you don't find anything better than V. So you should put V at the minimum, which is minus infinity. And minus infinity means very small. Infinity is very small number. Essentially. Like uh, infinity is a large number that you can put it in your computer, essentially, or the value that you have. If you know all the values, essentially, or I don't know, 
between one and minus one, then you may put it essentially infinity equal to two. But otherwise, uh, if the evaluation function also adds more to that, because that also is some kind of monotone function, maybe change the values, then you can put it much uh, infinity, you can put it much larger value and minus infinity would be much smaller. Now, uh, for every child y of x, so we are at x here, correct? We talk about d already, we handle d, now alphabet. Uh, what do we do? We are finding the v is, I mean, child of it, so we should do the max. So we are doing essentially max of v, the v is the current max that we have it so far. And then alpha beta of the rest of it. What is the alpha beta? Is the, uh, okay, uh, so you are going to y and the depth, the budget will go down. And then you are doing with the same alpha beta that you have here. But this alpha beta will be updated. Uh, how come this is the case? You see that if V is greater than beta, then uh, return V. So this is essentially the cut part. So it said that if uh, V is greater than beta, it means that this is we are essentially in that case, the previous case that we discussed. So this is a beta pruning. So here we had this thing. This is that is D is greater than beta, correct? We said that if D is greater than beta, then don't continue. This is exactly the same thing that we have it. Here. We said that if V is greater than beta, then return. Return means cut the rest of it. Don't continue. Good. And if not, so th this is essentially the beta cutoff. So this is the uh, beta By returning means that don't continue. That was exactly the condition that you have. Uh, I mean, otherwise you should continue. And when you continue at the same time, you are you got another alpha. You know that the value should be, what was the alpha? Alpha was the value that you know that the value should be at least alpha, like the max of these guys, because you will get essentially max on all of this. In that case, just update the alpha. And then with the previous alpha and this new V, you just update the alpha. Exactly, the, uh, I mean, the dual of this, it is called dual, essentially. Max and mean are called dual of each other. We talk about uh, linear programming, and we mentioned max and mean there as well. So this is some kind of dual that we are doing, or like a very symmetric version of it. Uh, this is the same thing that we do it for alpha cutoff. So we will, in this case, then we know that we are in the mean node. What this is like, say, you are in the mean node, or x is a min node. So if x is a min node, then v here, it will be infinity because you want to find the minimum things. For every child of it, you will just do it the current minimum that you have and the value of this with the same alpha beta. If v is less than or equal to alpha, then return v. This is exactly the alpha cutoff. That we discussed. And what about here, the beta would be the, mean of uh, beta and V. If uh, this is a, like a, a smaller mean that you found, this was exactly the thing that we discussed. You will update that. So that's essentially the whole code but actually can do it much better than the previous one. Let's see, uh, how is it going here? See some examples here. So, okay. uh, uh, one important thing. So here, let me, uh, 
essentially call these things as we have seen it here. When you want to call this thing, it should be originally, it should be alpha equal to, uh, minus infinity and beta should be infinity. Again, alpha is the one that we want to find the max. So when you want to find the max, the default value should be minus infinity. Beta is the one that you want to find the mean. So the temporary value, the current value should be infinite. So you will put that one. So you will come with the same alpha beta, you will come here to B. Say D is essentially is large. So in that case, you don't need to use the evaluation. So you will come, for example, to be still the same value. Because here, as you will see, alpha beta is passed essentially to the lower levels. And there is no update so far. Uh, OK. So here, you will come here and say the value of B is 7, essentially. I mean, that can compute, essentially, using, I don't know. Uh, you may use evaluation function or you may reach essentially some uh, terminal node and you get some. So in this case, uh, and A, so B was the mean node, so A is the max node, so seven is coming here. Good. So seven is coming here. Now here, alpha is equal to minus infinity. Or was minus infinity. Here, alpha gets updated because of this rule. Because we are at a max node. And alpha, we got one alpha, it is seven. So we know that alpha is seven. Now I'm using this seven when I go to the other nodes. So this alpha and beta are changing, and later it becomes better, essentially, in terms of it. Good. So let's go and do it more. Good. Now, uh, it is here. Uh, alpha mm -hmm. is 7, beta still is infinity. So we will come here to D. Uh, this is, so far, it is, we are doing like DFS. So, uh, like depth first search. This is the one that you have seen in 350. And again, like if you go to my introduction to algorithms course on YouTube, you can actually see more about it. But here we are just going in depth because we didn't find the thing. So we will go with the same value all the way here to G. Uh, still with the same alpha. Good. So uh, here in this case, we will find that the g is equal to five. And g say is a mean node or is a terminal node. Here this is actually say yeah, is a mean node. So then this one, the five is coming here to f for this one. And here uh, this is a max node. So alpha will not get updated because the five is less than alpha essentially. So we need to continue. So here we will find H, which is minus three. And in this case, we know that, okay, this is, we are done here. And then F, the value of F would be five, essentially. But it does not change anything. We need it actually here. We already needed to go through these people and to understand, okay, none of them essentially is the one that is better for us. And we didn't cut anything. We couldn't cut because, I mean, we don't have a, like a, 
we have a certain uh, look ahead, but not completely look ahead. So in some sense, here maybe you should not go to H because it was not useful for us. But I mean, we didn't know that. We need to check it. Still, we need to do the thing. It's not the case that we completely, essentially, remove the computations. Good. Now uh, let's go and see what will happen after that. Good. Now you will come here to the E node. So E is the mean here. Then we understand that E it would be five because of this node. But we, this is the mean node. We know that here, uh, essentially, so this is the mean node. And we know that the value of this, which is the value here would be five so far. That would be less than or equal to alpha. We just return the five value because it's okay, maybe you can get three value, but who cares? Anyhow, it is less than seven, the current max. So here we do the cutoff estimation. So here in this case, we are, this is exactly this part, that this is less than that, we return the V. And then we return the value of V, which is five. Not that the actual value of this E might be less than five, but doesn't matter for us because we try to say at the end, what is the best max for us? And doesn't matter, five or three doesn't matter. Already we have some better options. Good. So then if this five is coming, this five is coming here to D and then uh, see what will happen after that. Good. So then you will come here to five. So here, this is five, and this is a max node. We cannot do any cutoff here. So we will go here. This is the same. Alpha seven and beta is infinity. We will go here again. We are doing DFS until we find a value. So uh, here we are going there, and then this we are finding a value zero uh, here. Then uh, this one k would be essentially zero. Uh, I mean that would be k would be uh, at most zero. Let's continue, see what will happen. Good. Uh, here we are finding another value, which is eight. Here we are taking the max, so the max would be eight. Eight comes up essentially here. When eight comes up here, this is the mean node. Good. Here this case happens that the value that we have it here uh, this is the case. So this is the mean node. We are not returning So th this one. And then we have the beta, which would be the mean of, this is the, look, this is the mean node. And we found the beta. Uh, so uh, note that the value here is not less than alpha because the value here is actually eight. Eight is not less than seven, so we are not returning here. Instead, we will come to the next one, and it says that the beta should be updated. Beta would be eight here. So beta will be updated here. Now we are going essentially with uh, alpha equal to seven and beta equal to eight to this node. Here we are seeing uh, here we are seeing uh, 
uh, nine, and the nine is come here. Now, uh, this is the, so this is a max node. And here, this nine that will come is, uh, so uh, nine is coming here. And then for this uh, other things, the a beta cutoff happens. Uh, why? Uh, this is the case that happens. So the value that we will get it, it would be nine, which is greater than the current beta that we have, eight. So in that case, it means that uh, like uh, here, there is not much use for us essentially, and you can just cut this beta. And let's see what will happen again. Good. So uh, we will come up on the tree. And then when we come in the tree, we are just this beta that we obtained. Uh, essentially, will be updated here. So this beta gets updated here, and uh, then this is the beta infinity. Then this alpha, as we mentioned, and then finally this beta comes here, and then this beta gets updated here. So we have alpha equal to seven and beta equal to eight. You see here, I mean, at the when we tried here, it was minus infinity and infinity. Here, it is much more restricted the case that we have. So hopefully, we can find the solution. We just search those things that may help us essentially, otherwise we just ignore them. Again, you will come alpha beta equal to eight here, and then you will continue here to find better values. And this is just some examples essentially that you could see alpha, beta in uh, both of these cases. Good, so uh, this was an example. Now let's talk about Good. So it's kind of uh, alpha, beta in general, uh, alpha, beta pruning is some kind of uh, Meta reasoning. So, what's the meaning of meta reasoning? So, essentially, means that uh, some part of the tree which are irrelevant, we can actually uh, just cut off and say that this part of computations are not really needed. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, the idea here is that I mean, you try to I mean when you are going through this tree, you say, okay, this part of the computation, I really don't need essentially to do anything because I can just cut it off and then I can still get the value that I want essentially without much computations. So what are the theorems that we have? So these are the theorems that we have. So if the, so we know that if the value returned by min max is within range alpha and beta, then if you uh, essentially, uh, if you do alpha beta with the correct value alpha and beta, so if you know that this value that it is written by min max, so min max, there is no alpha beta here. If the value that is written is it is in the range alpha to beta, then actually if you do it alpha beta search with the, this alpha and beta, then it returns the same value. So as long as the min max is between your alpha and beta range, this send is essentially correct. We know that if the min max value is less than alpha, if you <laughs> run this one, also it returns a value which is less than or equal to alpha, but not necessarily the same value. The same thing here. If the min max value is greater than beta, then in this case, Alpha beta also returns a value 
which is greater than or equal to beta. But uh, it is, again, very important to see that if you want, we want to generally find the exact value of the game. So if you want to find the exact value of the game, in that case, uh, you need to run it and you, will, you need to make sure that the value of this is actually between alpha and beta. Because that's the exact, that's the only time that you get the same value. In other cases, you may get some value less than or equal, but not exactly the same value. But as a corollary, as I mentioned, if you run this alpha beta, with minus infinity and infinity, because always you know that the value of the game would be between minus infinity and infinity. Then you will get the, exactly the min max value. And as we discussed before, if this D, D is the depth, if the budget of the depth is also infinity, then in this case, you will actually get the V of X, the value of the whole game. So if, if you really want to get the actual value, you need to get the depth infinity such that you will go all the way to find the term. So these are the corollaries that we have. So that's the reason that we are we're running essentially alpha, beta with minus infinity and infinity. Yeah. Wait, so you said, so the two philosophy say that if min max, so it returns less than the alpha and then it becomes the same as but then alpha is minus negative infinity. So by that theorem, the corollary should be both for something less than negative infinity greater than positive infinity. Or am I understanding something wrong? Uh, sorry, uh, just uh, and so let me just take a look at it. That's a good question here. So here we are running essentially uh, alpha minus infinity, correct, and beta infinity, correct. So uh, here, and it said, so alpha is essentially less than beta, the thing that we have. And so, let's get in everything here. Good. So here we say that, I mean, if it is between alpha and beta, and this alpha is less than or equal to beta, then the value would be the correct value. Mm -hmm. Is Here it says that if the value is, is, is less than or equal to alpha, then we get some value which is less than or equal to alpha. Oh, wait, I understand. Yeah. Okay. And if it is the value is greater than beta, it gets essentially value greater than. Okay. But does not return exactly the same value. That is, the only case is the first one. So to get the same value, you need to put it minus infinity or alpha, and you better you need to put it in infinity. Okay. Or essentially minus infinity is at the largest value or the smallest value. I mean, that you can decide about what could be your infinity in your program. Uh, good. <laughs> so, so this kind of node order. So let's see uh, how much uh, we discuss about the previous cases about like how much uh, can save us essentially in terms of. So uh, the first thing is that this look ahead, this depth D essentially. Generally, we have these things. So this is uh, some kind of games that, I mean, uh, there are some kind of pathological games that this does not happen. But generally, if you put the depth higher depth, you should get better values. But you can create some example, actually, to put it higher values, you will essentially get it uh, like worse things. And, and again, note that these are still much less than the depth of the tree. If it is greater than the depth of the tree, always you will get the correct value. The question that how much, like if you consider the to min max with depth D, how much alpha beta is better essentially? So the base case essentially So this is something that you can actually, this is a good exercise that you can do that. So the base case happens for this, uh, like alpha beta pruning. Children of the max nodes are searched in the greatest value first. So when you see a max, so this is a max node. So you will see here, for example, 10, nine, I don't know, five, 
This is the best things that will happen essentially for the max node. And for the min nodes are essentially the least value. So this is the one essentially one, five, nine, and I don't know, 12. So for the mid node, you essentially you are going in the increasing order. For the max node, so this is max and this is min. So for the mean, you are going essentially from uh, in the increasing value. For the max, you are going decreasing value. You can see in this case, you will skip every other level essentially. So, uh, here you can, uh, I, so, uh, this, I mean, this is, I will leave it as an exercise. I think that would be a good exercise to check it and just run it on these things. And you will see that every other level you will skip essentially. Because in, in some sense, in one, in every other level, you will just go through one of these guys and you will cut off all the other guys. But for the other level, you need to still go all of So that means that you see here you will come here and then you will go here. So instead of uh, uh, here <clears throat> having uh, B times B, here we had B options, here we had B. Instead of B a square, we have B times one because you have only one option, it would be B. So in general, the time complexity, in this case, the best case would be B to the D over two. As I mentioned, every other level you will skip because you will just take the first guy. You don't need to go to the rest of it. <laughs> but this is a, a base case. The worst case is exactly the reverse of this. Children of max nodes are searched in the least value. So it is exactly the reverse of this. So it is, mm, let me just change the pen. So it would be like something like this. Uh, I don't know. Three, five, nine, and ten. And here it would be twelve, nine, five, and one. So this would be worst case. And this would be base case, best case. And the this one that I have mentioned, these uh, three things. Uh, maybe I can just actually this, but let me delete this one and write it. Uh, So that would be the best case. So uh, this is the worst case, this is the best case essentially. And if this is the worst case happens, essentially you don't do any cutoff. If this is for all these nodes essentially are happening like this, uh, then you don't uh, uh, do any cutoff. Uh, because in some sense, you don't understand until you are seeing the last node. In this case, actually, the bit, the depths would be exactly this B to the D over two, B to the D. So you didn't save anything. You need to still go essentially B to the D that you could do it in the max, uh, this min max. So the performance of alpha beta pruning, it would be something between B of D over two and like B to the D over two versus B to the D. And you can see that now, it, like it, the average case would be the case that these guys, they are coming in a random order. And then in this case, the B would be something, it would be B to the sum power between D and D over two. <laughs> so in the average case, if you say that these are not the 
are coming like increasing or decreasing. They are coming in a random order. You can actually see that you will get something in between. For this case, this would be a good exercise. I think that would be a good things to check it uh, and see. I gave you the ideas essentially, but you can do it exactly. And there are some analysis for the. <clears throat> If these are the random order, a more careful analysis needed to see what is the exact thing that you will get it. But you will get it something better than the one that better than min max. Good. So let me uh, clear all drawings here. So, uh, okay. So what can do a little. <laughs> Uh, so uh, this is, again, some kind of more heuristic to improve a little bit this algorithm. So uh, what is the idea? The idea is this one. This is node ordering. I mentioned that if it is in the best order, it is better to, I mean, the best order is the one that we have mentioned. For the max node, they should go in the decreasing order, and the for min node, they should go in the increasing order. Now, the issue is that you don't know the value of these people in advance. However, you have a choice to go to which node first, because these are the children. And each of these children, you decide about which order you want to go to this tree. That is up to you. And by you means your program station. Of course, if you don't know the value, then you don't know which what would be the order. However, this is something that, again, the evaluation function can help you. The idea is that every time you will expand a state S, apply E to its children. So evaluation function, it was something that gives some approximation for the value of this function. And we mentioned, as long as even is monotone is enough. So when it is a max move, then sort the children in the order of larger E value first. And when it is a mean move, then sort the children in the order of a smallest difference. Good. So we are we don't know the value, but the order is up to us or our program. How can we find the best order? Uh, we can use the evaluation function. Evaluation function, hopefully, is a good function, is a reasonable function, gives you somehow approximately what is the best order and what is the worst order. So in that case, actually, it can help such that we can go from B to the D, to the B to the D over two. And this is actually a huge thing that I mentioned, because as we discussed, generally, even you go one level down, the valuations, the program would be a much better program. Here, we are saving by D over two. It would be a huge thing. Like, instead of uh, going 10 move ahead, we can go 20 move ahead. It is a large thing. So here, for example, uh, suppose we have a, like 100 seconds, essentially. And we can explore like 10 to the 4 nodes per second. So uh, this means that... Uh, We have 10 to the 6 nodes per move, essentially. And if you uh, if you put this one in terms of this uh, b to the d over 2 for chess, it would be, so say uh, this is the total uh, things that we have. This is the total time that we have. And then if you put this one in terms of the, in terms of chess, as we discussed, b is like, is uh, the average degree is 35. And then d, you can put it, <clears throat> This is somehow, uh, so this 10 to the 6 essentially is equal to this. Hmm. What's the meaning of that? It means that here, this alpha beta can go to depth 8 to see what, if you go depth 8, you have time essentially to go to depth 8 and see based on your evaluation function, compute this uh, best thing. And this is actually a very good chess program. I mean, you might be, be able to actually do it more than uh, 
things. As I mentioned, so here we had 100 seconds. So the number of, you can, this is your computer. You can explore 10 to the four nodes per second. But uh, like a faster computer can do more than that. Maybe it can do it, I don't know, uh, 10 to the six moves per second. So in this case, the, num the total number of things that you can do, it is 10 to the six. <clears throat> and again, this 100 seconds is that like, the, this is the amount of time that you can think. So given your program, so any program that you want to play, there's some maximum time that you can think. Like in your project or other, this is some maximum time. This is the amount of thinking time that you have. In this amount of thinking time, you can go essentially double uh, depth, which is much better essentially. Again, in all regular games like chess or others, when you go even one level higher, more than you can get better things, let alone that you will double the depth. <clears throat> and again, uh, so if you have like faster computers now, I think we can actually, this was from several years ago. So we, we should have much faster computers now, and then you can do better. And uh, this, uh, this is not only this, you can possibly uh, do something. If you are using a Spark, for example, so a Spark is in the, uh, like the map reduce framework. Uh, you can read more about them. Uh, and I talk about it in the introduction to algorithm when I talk about the big data. So if you have this Spark or a MapReduce framework, you can do it something in parallel. Like for example, you can have a cloud and you can do this one in parallel. Then in the given amount of time, you can have lots of computers that are running together. And each of them is doing part of this. But then that would be actually interesting uh, open problem, like interesting problem to think about it. If you have this kind of uh, search trees uh, over different uh, computers, how can you do essentially faster in a parallel way? But I mean, in general, naively at least each of them can do part of this tree separately. But this alpha beta pruning becomes more complicated, how you can coordinate over different computers. But anyhow, if you have the, uh, lots of computers, you can do more computations and possibly you can go more depth as well. So you can have even a stronger program if you are using parallel computations, like in some framework like Spark, Apache Spark. Good. So these are all, all this, we discuss about different ways that you can improve it further, 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 further. But of course, these are, I mean, just some of these uh, uh, things that we have uh, discussed. There are lots of other ways to improve it. And these are exactly the ones that you should go on to that. Uh, I mean, these are like some kind of, uh, like some kind of bias thing you may uh, do it essentially. You can do some transposition table. You can search essentially or ask ChatGPT, you can get more about it. You can uh, have a take table look of the best move. So this is actually, this one also is interesting uh, sometime. This uh, table look of another thing that is useful. So uh, this is like, if you have some space, that might be the case. So some of this, that when you compute part of the table, you may just save it. Next time, if you, come and say that these are the similar things, you don't need to compute it again, because you can just see your lookup table, and if it is some value which is useful, you will take it from that. So one time you will, this is kind of memo, uh, like uh, memo is dynamic programming in some sense. Again, I'm talking it in the introduction to algorithms. If you go there, you can see that. But sometimes you can actually, when you, this kind of going to the search tree, some kind of backtracking. When you go there, you can uh, save some of these states in some kind of array or some limited space, such that next time that you will come, you may see, oh, the value is already computed, so I don't need to compute it. This can make actually the thing quite fast. This is the other thing. Of course, you can tick on the opponent's time if this is something allowed to you. For example, if you are playing, I mean, during the time that the other person is thinking or the other computer is thinking, you may also think during that time, if this is allowed. 
uh, you may do iterative deepening. And as I mentioned, the other one is essentially this uh, alpha go. This is a program these are like uh, essentially using uh, deep nets and reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning or RLS in shell. So you can, these are some more techniques that you can do it. These are like about the deep nets and you can just go and there are some papers there. You can uh, look at the approach that the people have used it and then try to do it. And uh, as I mentioned in the deep net, this is the idea that you are just running, starting with some program and this program, they just play with each other and they become stronger and stronger. Just this is like uh, somehow the current uh, best program. So in some sense, I think there was this discussion that we had in the class that the idea is that you generally in chess or others, you want to play with the people who are better than you. Such as you, and this is in almost any match, for example, even if you do table tennis or tennis, you want to play with the people who are better than you. At the same time, the people who are better than you may not want to work with you because that may not improve their things essentially or even sometimes decrease their capabilities. But you always want to work essentially with the people, play with the people who are better than you. So in that sense, you are starting with some programs and this program becomes better and better. So who is the best opponent? Is the opponent the best one that you have it? So just play with each other and then essentially becomes much, much stronger. So that was essentially somehow the idea of AlphaGo that among other ideas that they use, this is the idea that they use and it worked great essentially. But the big news in like 2017 or around 2016 time, essentially. <laughs> so that's a, another good thing that you can go and try to do it and read it. And, and again, always you want to see, you want to submit. When you write this program, you want to submit it for anything, for the competition or for class project, etc. It is always to uh, the best programs that you have it, you have written using different algorithms. Just let them again play with each other, like I don't know, 10 times or maybe 100 times. See who wins most of the time. That probably is the strongest one that you can submit. And you can read about these other things, uh, I mean, through web or through ChatGPT and other stuff. Uh, so this is uh, like just I think the latest things I wanted to finish. So this is about the game search tree in practice. I think we mentioned some of them, but I just want to uh, repeat this one. So uh, in 1994, Chinook ended the 40-year uh, essentially a reign of a human world champion. This one, and this was essentially for the checkers. And in 2007, it, uh, checkers essentially was solved. It is a perfect play that as we discussed it. And they said that in the perfect play that everyone essentially doing the best move is a play. For chess in 1997, Deep Blue defeated uh, Gary Kasparov in six game match. Uh, this search 200 million positions per seconds. Uh, and it could actually, uh, I mean, use a very sophisticated program. Uh, Otello or Reverse is uh, some, uh, so it's the one that human uh, champions don't compete against computers. And in this case, the computers are too good. This is like the project that essentially you are writing similar to that. And the Go, as I mentioned, in 2006, uh, uh, good amateurs could beat essentially the best Go program at that time. And Go programs have improved a lot. I think this is 2006. Now it is 2023. It is the 17 years. So in the past, like in 17 years, they have improved quite a bit actually. And as I mentioned, they were using lots of deep nets and reinforcement learning, and they are much, much better now than humans. So, uh, 
So uh, I think this is what the summary that we discussed is our, like we talk about zero sum, we talk about the min max, we talk about how you can do uh, limited depths. You need to use evaluation function. You can use alpha beta pruning. You can use combination of alpha beta pruning and evaluation function to find the best order. And of course, there are lots of other ways that we discussed about some lookup tables and others that you can also read more about them or the, using the deep neural nets and this kind of reinforcement learning techniques. I think that's the thing. So this is, again, some start in some sense. All of this that I mentioned, yes, you can have a good start program using these ideas, but you should go much beyond that and essentially find the best things for your project or for other project that you may have it in the future. Uh, good. I stop here.